like materials, we may track by the date that we, we brought the materials in. If we have a long job that we're working on, we may have multiple dates that we're going to have here. Something like a construction company we might have, of course, multiple dates of materials. Requisitions, meaning we might have, you know, that's going to be the document that we're going to use in order to requisition materials. If we're in a large company, then we're going to have to get the materials from, you know, purchasing or the materials department. We're going to have to ask for those to happen. We're going to have to requisition those. We might list out the requisition number if that's the case. But at the minimum, we probably want the date and the cost of the materials uh, per job. And then we're going to have the direct uh, labor that we're going to have. And again, if it's a construction company, we might have multiple dates and multiple people at multiple different rates in uh, that are working on on a particular job. We're going to want the date and then we're going to want the, the time ticket or some kind of tracking to uh, a source document to be able to know how much time and what the billable rate that we're using is for these. So we, we're going to source these out again. And, and these time tickets are going to help us to know exactly how much to apply to these particular jobs. And again, this could get kind of complicated because we might have multiple people at multiple different billable rates. And of course, a, a computer system can help us out with this. But at the, at the minimum, we need the date and we need the cost that we're going to have for the hours that will be worked. And, and the hours worked, we might be charging just per hour on our, on our, direct, on our direct labor. It's basically the payroll that we have here. We're processing the payroll and allocating the payroll not to an expense as we process it, but to whatever job we're applying to. And then we've got the overhead, which is always the most confusing part, both to us creating it and when we, when we try to explain something like this uh, to a customer, how much it costs us. And the overhead, we're going to say is a pre, we're going to have a predetermined overhead rate. And here we're going to say it's 160 percent of direct uh, labor and shipping labor costs. And notice that uh, that it has nothing to do with labor uh, in particular, but labor can be used as uh, as a way for us to know how big one job is compared to another. So, for example, if total labor was 1000 for this job and it's 2000 for the second job, that might be a good way for us to say, hmm, well, that means that we should be applying, you know, twice as much of 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 overhead to the second job, not because there was more labor, but because the more labor indicates that uh, it's a bigger job. So we're using direct labor as an indicator uh, to to some to allocate the overhead. We'll talk more about that allocation and how that how that works, how we get to this number here. But just note that the overhead is going to have to do with everything else that's involved. So if we make the guitar, everything in the factory, so the depreciation on the factory, the the you know the any s small materials that we use in the factory, the, the indirect labor in the factory, the indirect material in the factory. Uh, any, anything, utilities in the factory, anything in the factory. And then if we sum these up, then we got the uh, materials, we've got the labor, and we've got the overhead. That's going to be our total cost. Now, if you look at this, you might say, hmm, this looks a lot like an invoice or like a bid that we might make on, say, like a construction company or something like that. And it is very similar. But note that this is tracking the the basically the actual costs here. So this isn't a bid, which would look the same but it would be before, you know, before we do any work, this is basically the actual cost as close as we can. Of course, this is an estimate over here in the overhead, but this is the actual cost. And note that a bid or an invoice won't stop here because this is only the cost. We might include this in our invoice. We might tell our customers, hey, here's our invoice. The materials cost this, the labor cost this, the overhead cost this. This is our best calculation of what the cost is. And our markup is whatever it is, right? If we have a 30% markup, we might say that then how much are we charging you? 3266 times a 30% mark of 1.3 and then get the, the, the amount that we're going to bill. So this might be the start to the bill, in other words. But then we're going to say that uh, based on that, we're going to give our markup and this is the actual amount that, that we might have, say, if we were using this to create a bill. So note that, of course, if we had a process in a construction company, if it was a big job, we would probably set a price at the beginning based on an estimate that would be similar to this, but it would all be estimates. And then we might tell uh, our customer that we're either going to, you know, abide by the estimate or we are going to make adjustments if the costs run over the estimate. And then 
once we have the end product here, here's the end product, here's our end cost, uh, we, we might use this then for the invoice basically and mark it up. So this looks similar to the invoice, but this it, it might be used for invoicing uh, a similar type of process, but this is gonna be the actually used for the allocation of the job. What we will definitely use this for is when we sell uh, this, if this was a guitar or something, if this was the job, once the job is done, once we sell the inventory at the end, then we will uh, debit uh, accounts receivable or cash, we'll credit sales, not for this number, possibly for that other number that we just looked at, but then this number will be used to debit cost of goods sold, the expense on the income statement, the cost of the inventory we used, and then we'll credit the inventory, lowering the finished goods inventory by this amount. Also note that this is only one job here. So when we think of the work in process account, what's reported on the balance sheet in work in process, it's gonna be the sum of all these jobs. So this would be like one customer. This amount would be like similar to one customer on the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. And we'd have to add up all the customers to get to the number on the balance sheet. This is like one job on uh, our, our job sheets and we would have to add up all the jobs that are open that haven't been finished yet in order to to uh, add up to what is being included on the balance sheet in work in process